Hi, I'm Kohei Tokunaga from NTT Corporation. I'm a reviewer of Contenary and a maintainer of non quasar project Sarji Death Snapshot in Contenary. I'm joined today by Akihiro Suda from NTT Corporation. He is a maintainer of Contenary project. Today, we will introduce and deep dive into Contenary. First, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Contenary. Contenary is a continual runtime project. It is the fifth CNCF graduated project. Contenary manages resources about containers, including container processes, images, file system, metadata, and resource dependencies. Then it provides clean interface to upper tools. I will introduce the internal architecture of Contenary later as well. Contenary is tightly scoped, but it's highly extensible. In community, there are many projects that leverage this continuity with extending it. Extensibility is also one of the major topics in this session. I will introduce some examples about how to extend continuity. Continuity is now widely used by container-based tools in community, including Kubernetes and Docker. Let's now focus on the adoption status in community from the next slide. Contenary is widely used in community, including Docker's use of Contenary. Contenary is 83% of container usage, according to the survey in 2021. Contenary is used by managed services as well as open source projects, including managed services like GKE, AWS Fargate, AKS, IKS, development tools like Docker Mobile BuildKit, Kubernetes distributions like K3S, Kind, Minikube, KubeSpray, MicroKS, and K3S, and functions as a service like Fasti. If you are using either of these tools, you are already using Contenity. So how Contenity is used in community? Contenity is mainly used in three different ways. It's used as a CRI runtime on Kubernetes, as a component of Docker, and as a general container management tool by various container based tools. Let's take a look at each of them. One of the most well-known use cases of container is as a CRI runtime on Kubernetes. As shown in the diagram, Contenity runs on each node. When Kubelet on the node detects pods events from Kube API server, Kubelet invokes Contenity's container management functionalities. The API used by Kubelet is called CRI. As a CRI runtime, Contenity pulls images from registry and manages pods, containers, and images. It pulls and stores images from the registry and executes them as containers using low-level runtimes, including RunC, GVisor, and Kata containers, etc. It is now the de facto standard CRI runtime for Kubernetes. It's used by various managed Kubernetes services and Kubernetes distributions. Contenity has been used as a component of Docker. Docker relies on Contenity for container execution and management. Images put and managed by Docker are executed by Contenity as containers. Different from Kubernetes, the API used by Docker to invoke Contenity's functionalities is called Contenity API. So Contenity has two types of APIs, CRI and Contenity API. Then Contenity manages containers using low-level runtimes. Contenity is also used as general container management tool. Several applications are developed based on Contenity. They include BuildKit, Fasti, Nadkaru, and Porch Container. Contenity API is commonly used by these tools. Contenity provides Go client library and utilities for Contenity based container management. Applications can use them for integrating to Contenity. Contenity can also be extended using plugins without recompilation, as discussed later. As shown in the previous slides, Contenity manages images, containers, and pods. So, how is it done? Let's take a look at Contenity's internal components. Contenity has client-server architecture. It provides APIs and container management functionalities to the client. 
ContentD project provides Go client library for easily integrate to ContentD. Client calls server via ContentD API through Unix socket. In addition to ContentD API, ContentD also provides CRI for Kubernetes as well. Kubernetes calls ContentD's functionality via CRI. ContentD supports various low-level runtimes, including RunC, Gvisor, and Kata containers. It also supports non-OCI runtimes, including Firecracker. ContentD is highly extensible, so users can customize its functionality using various low-level plugins, custom services, or custom client library. We will discuss about extensibility in more detail later. ContentD project provides ContentD API client library. It is called Smart Client and contains rich container-related utilities, including ContentD API bindings, container registry client, pulling and pushing images, image unpacker, and creating OCI config for OCI runtimes. Using the client library, there are several ContentD client implementations in community. CTL is a CLI client for ContentD. This is developed in ContentD project. It's like a ContentD API wrapper and set up container management utilities. It's mainly used for debugging of ContentD or trying new features. NADCATL is a Docker compatible CLI for ContentD. Because of the compatibility, it's easy to use for Docker users. In addition to Docker compatible features, it also provides ContentD's cutting edge features, including lazy pulling and image encryption. We will discuss about NADCATL in more detail later with Akihiro. As mentioned in previous slides, various ContentD based tools are developed as ContentD client in community, leveraging client library and ContentD API. ContentD server or core provides container management functionality to the client via GLPC API. The ContentD core is implemented as a set of microservices. And the set of APIs of these services are provided to the client as ContentD API. For example, as shown in the figure, there are several services like container service for container metadata management, image service for image metadata management, task service for performing container execution, and CRI service that implements CRI. Among these services, there is a shared metadata underneath. It's Bebop-based key values tool. It stores metadata of containers, images, contents, file system snapshots, etc. It also manages reference graph of these resources for performing garbage correction. CRI for Kubernetes is also implemented as a microservice in ContentD. Initially, CRI is implemented as a separated client binary, but it's currently built into ContentD core, and the code base is also merged to ContentD repository since ContentD 1.5. As shown in the figure, CRI service provides image service API and runtime service API defined by CRI. These functionalities are implemented based on other ContentD services and external plugins. Other external plugins, CRI plugin and NRI plugin are currently used. CNI plugin is used for network interface preparation for pods and an array plugin is used for managing node resources like cgroup. Because CRI service relies on other services, it contains ContentD client calls for talking to other ContentD services and plugins. Based on these services, CRI implements pods, containers, and images management. In ContentD core, there are several services that provide low-level role of container management. Content Store is a store for image contents, including manifests and layers. It stores these contents as its basis, so without decompression nor extraction. These contents are content addressable and keyed by the Content Digest. Snapshot also manages image contents, but it focuses on the file system snapshots. Snapshots are extracted and stacked view of containers root file system layers. 
snapshots are created by snapshot and passed to OCI runtimes, as root file system of containers. There are several snapshot implementation per backing file system. Overlay FS snapshot is one of the most used ones, but there are also other implementations like ButterFS snapshot, AUFS snapshot, and fused based snapshot, etc. Runtime service executes low level runtimes via SIM. SIM is a wrapper daemon for OCI runtime and manages the container's lifecycle and logging. Different from one-shot OCI runtime series, SIM is a long-running process that has the same lifetime with the container, so it's well suited to runtimes that need to manage stateful resources like virtual machine of data containers. This figure shows how an image is executed as a container in ContainerD. Connecting to the registry and downloading image contents are client's responsibility. Registry-related utilities are implemented in the ContainerD smart client library. Once the client pulls image contents, it stores the contents to ContainerD core's content store as its basis, so without decompression or extraction. Image layer contents stored in the content store are decompressed and extracted by diff service, and the stacked root file system view is managed by snapshot. Client library provides unpacker utility for this process. Then snapshots are used by task and runtime service and passed to OCI runtimes. And they are used as continuous root file system. Task service can be used via ContainerD API bindings by the client. As discussed in previous slides, ContainerD is highly extensible. Let's look at how it's done and some examples of extension for leveraging ContainerD. You can extend ContainerD by plugging external binaries into ContainerD without recompilation. Go plugins can also be used. There are two types of external binary plugins. One is a plugin that talks to ContainerD via Unix socket. Proxy snapshot and proxy content store are this type of plugins. Another is a plugin as an executable binary. Stream processor and SIM are this type of plugins. ContainerD API is also extensible by implementing your own custom service. For example, Firecracker Continuity has new APIs called Control API by their own control service. From next slides, let me introduce some examples to extend Continuity using these plugins. Using plugins, you can enable LazyPlink on Continuity. Remote Snapshot plugin is a plugin that enables this feature. Remote Snapshot allows Continuity to perform LazyPlink of images from arbitrary remote store. Lazy plane here means ContainerD can start up containers without waiting for the entire image contents being locally available. Instead, necessary chunks of image contents are pulled on demand. As shown in the following figure, Remote Snapshot plugin has a responsibility to fetch image contents from the backend store and provide containers root file system snapshots to ContainerD. As mentioned in the previous slides, Snapshot can plug into ContainerD via Unix socket, so no recompilation is required. There are several remote Snapshot implementations in community. For example, StarGZ Snapshot is a remote Snapshot developed as a non core project of ContainerD. This enables ContainerD to lazily pull images from the standard registry. ContainerD handles image layers for creating containers root file system. The image layer formats are defined by OCI image spec and GZIF, Z standard and plain tail layers are currently supported. However, not limited to OCI layers, ContainerD can handle arbitrary layer formats like encrypted layers, even if they are not supported by the OCI image spec. The plugin enables this if stream processor. As shown in the following figure, diff service can recognize several stream processors. This service converts image layers downloaded from the registry into root file system snapshots with chaining these stream processors. Each stream processor converts the media type of the layer into another. 
Diff service can handle arbitrary media type of layers as long as the corresponding stream processor is plugged into Diff service. For example, Image Crypt stream processor enables containerd to handle encrypted image layers. Stream processor binary can be plugged into containerd as a separated binary, so recompilation is not needed. Containerd can integrate to arbitrary low-level runtimes. Low-level runtimes are not limited to OCI runtime, but non-OCI runtime, like Firecrocker, can also integrate to containerd. The plugin enables this is called Shim. Shim works as a thin wrapper of low-level runtimes. Each low-level runtime can be integrated to containerd by implementing their Shim, following the defined Shim API. RunC Shim, provided by containerd project, also supports pluggable logging destination feature. This enables Shim to stream container logs into arbitrary destination like FFO, and pipe, external binary, and file. From next slide, Akihiro will talk about the Containerd client. Hi, my name is Akihiro Suda. I'm a maintainer of Containerd. In my part, I'll explain how to implement your own Containerd client for fun and profit. To implement your own Containerd client, first, you need to choose API from two APIs. The first one is Continuity's native API, and the second one is CRI API. The native API is used by several projects, including Docker Mobi, BuildKit, FASD, NerdCTL, and other third party projects. On the other hand, CRI API is used by Kubernetes. These APIs are similar, and both of them use ZRPC over Unix socket as the transportation mechanism. But there are several notable differences. For example, the native API is container oriented, while CRI API is part oriented. So the native API does not have first class support for pod objects. And the native API has several complexities compared to CRI API. But the selling point of the native API is that it has more flexibility and features such as pushing images to registries. So, so it's hard to tell which one is better. But I suggest using the native API of Continuity because you probably want to be able to use all the features of Continuity. But if you prefer simplicity, you may want to take a look into CRI API first. To use these APIs, in theory, you should use any programming language. However, in practice, you have to use Go language for the Continuity native API. Because the native API model depends on the smart client, smart client library that is implemented in Go language, especially for printing images from a registry. So currently, it's really hard to use other languages such as Rust or Python to implement your own client. We welcome contribution for supporting more languages. The next topic is an example of Continuity Client. You can find the example at https://continuity.io/docs/getting-started. In this example, you first create a client object using continuity.new with the demo suited at slash run slash continuity slash continuity.soc. And then you create a CTX object that is associated with a continuity namespace string. And then you pull the Redis image from Docker Hub using client.pull. 
then you will create container named Redis server with several options container d dot with image container d dot with new snapshot and container d dot with new spec and we have more with 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 options such as oci dot with process arcs for specifying the command line command line strings to be executed in the container and oci dot with mounts for mounting data volumes and OCI dot with memory limit for limiting memory resources and seccomp dot with profile for specifying a seccomp profile at this point your container is almost functional but in addition to the client you will have to implement OCI hooks and and also broker binary in most cases. An OCI hook is a custom command that is called on the host on creation and deletion of the container. An OCI hook is typically used for setting up and tearing down CNI bridge networks and port map configurations. Using OCI hooks is optional, but necessary if you want your containers to be restarted automatically on host reboot. This is complex, so I will show the code on the screen, but you can find an example code in the NerdCTL repo. And if you want to see the logs of the container, or transfer the logs to through entity or something else, you also have to specify a logger binary. The NeoCTL repo has an example code for storing logs as JSON files. And actually, NeoCTL is almost full implementation of Docker except Swarm stuff. It was spun out from the code of CTR, but it has more practical features compared to CTR, such as automatic restarting of containers and port forwarding, routing, and rootless mode. And it also supports lazy printing using surges in snapshooter and also Decryption of OCI crypt images. We carefully designed the source code of Nano CTL to be readable to beginners. So you may copy the source code of Nano CTL as a starter pack to create your own client application. The last, the last topic is the updates in Control D 1.5 and Future Plan. The version 1.5 of Control D is expected to be released by the end of April. This talk was recorded in early April and version 1.5 was not released at the time of recording, but I guess it will be released by the time of broadcasting. This new release supports ZSTD as an image compression algorithm in addition to GDIP. This algorithm is much faster than traditional GDIP. Version 1.5 also adds support for NRI, Node Resource Interface. NRI is similar to CI, Container Networking Interface, but NRI is for managing resources such as C group stuff. In this release, we also enabled decryption of OCI crypt by default. OCI crypt itself had been supported since version 1.3, but you had to provide a custom configuration file to use OCI crypt in previous releases. 
And we also recently put Nano CTL into the control D as a sub project. This is a Docker compatible CLI. I talked about this just a minute ago. And in this release, we also merged the repo of the CLI plugin into the main repo. This change is not visible to end users, but this monorepo model simplifies process for contributing to control D. We also switched away from vendor.conf into Go modules in this release. So next is future plan. In the next release, we are planning to support file system quota such as XFS quota for the root file system of the containers. We are also planning to support user namespaces for CRI so that Kubernetes can launch port as a non-root user that is different from the user account of container E. This is similar to rootless containers, which means running everything, including container D as a non-root user, but this is different from rootless containers and does not conflict either. We are also planning to support ports as first class objects and we are also planning to eliminate the port image for port sandboxes. We also need to have more documentations and we need your help. The last topic is recent updates of third party plugins. Last year, Dragonfly released Nigas Subshooter plugin for Continuum D. Nigas Subshooter is similar to Sargent Subshooter and enables daisy print as well as the application of the images, but Nigas uses a file format that is incompatible with OCI tables. And Alibaba recently released the overall BD Subshot plugin. BD means block devices. Overlay BD is similar to Overlay FS, but uses iSCSI block devices. We also have several new runtime plugins. Run You by Tadaki Hajime san is a runtime for running Linux containers on Mac OS using LKL Linux kernel library. RunJ by Samuel Karp is a runtime for running free BSD jails as OCI containers. Let me recap this session. Continuum D is a de facto standard runtime for Kubernetes, but not only for Kubernetes. It's used by Docker Mobi, BuildKit, FASD, and several other projects. Continuum D is designed to be extensible with plugins. We have many plugins such as runtime plugins, snapshot plugins, stream processor plugins, and loading plugins. And recently, we added a new subproject called NanoCTL. This is like Docker, but with full features of Continuum D. This is also like CTL, but with full user experience of Docker. That's all. Thanks.